Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show. I, I needed to... I needed to do the catching up. No one had to slow me down. I don't know mm. if that makes sense. No, it really does. Absolutely. And, you know, if people are interested, go to YouTube, type in Andrew Lovedale Davidson, because the power this guy had on the court was one of the best I've ever seen. It was ah. too remarkable to see <laughs> you, not just your defense, but obviously being a young bloke, we just, I just mm. admired the way you flew and dunked over people. Oh my Lord. <laughs> it was insane. No, but there's a lot I, more to your game see, than that. And now I see people jump and I hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know I've got sciatica left, right and center, you know, <laughs> um, pain in my back. Not that I ever dunked it. So I don't understand yeah. the issues that, uh, <laughs> that you had. Um, okay. So, you know, we we we're, we're young and you get a, an awesome opportunity talk to us quickly about the opportunity that transitional period from manchester to davidson uh, and where davidson stood in basketball terms at that point in time because davidson wasn't davidson really as it is today is it was it when you went uh davidson definitely wasn't davidson um mm. at the at the time that i was recruited but um, but Davidson was also Davidson. Davidson just wasn't, um, Davidson just wasn't known. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing about identity is you can be who you are and you can do the things that you do until the world gets to know about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so coach McKillop had built a program over the years, uh, and, and he had built that with, um, just putting a lot of energy into building a culture. Uh, and so yeah. Davidson at that time uh, might not have achieved the level of success that my team got to achieve, but I truly do. I truly do believe that the foundations that were laid by players before me uh, and players before them, mm -hmm. I think those were the foundations that we got to build upon. Right? It is. Um, it is so easy to take a snapshot of success, right? Mm -hmm. But what gets lost is that. Um, it's really not a snapshot that needs to be taken. You need to go back and see a lot of people who have labored to provide the opportunity that I believe that we came to enjoy. And mm -hmm. and the goal is always to leave a place better than you met it. Um, of course, and I yeah. do sincerely think, believe that there were so many players before us who coach instill the same culture and the same values that might not have they, they did some special things. They dominated the Southern Conference. They played in the NCAA tournament, mm. but they didn't get the win. But they had been creating this story yeah. uh, that we became a part of. And, the steps. Um, exactly. They created the steps. So I kind of mm -hmm. liken it to, <clears throat> I kind of liken it to, you know, trying to create this big party. Um, mm. And you're creating this big party. And, you know, a few people are coming to the party and they're having a great time. But, everyone else just didn't know that that party existed, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and then it took you inviting in a couple of pieces that fit into what you were trying to do. And then all of a sudden it opened the door and people got to, everyone got to become a part of the party, but it doesn't negate the fact that that was already there, that people were already laying that foundation. And, mm. um, and so Davidson might not have been known, but its identity was sealed yeah. uh, a long time ago. And we get to kind of come in and really build on what's been put there. Of course. Um, and, and, and I just feel so, I feel so blessed that it happened in my time. I, I always feel like um, it could have been another player. Um, you know, it could have been another player. It could have been another team. Uh, but we, were, we got to be the team that did it, right? Uh, before mm -hmm. Steph Curry was at Davidson, there were other great players, right? For there sure. were... Uh, guys like Brennan Winters and uh, and Mr. Williams that came by, right? And <clears throat> and they had great teams and they dominated the Southern Conference. Uh, and we just were the team that really got to enjoy. I would say we, we worked really hard, but we got to enjoy the fruits of their labor and got to invite them back into that party to celebrate what they had built on um, 
we were wearing the I, I sincerely believe we wore the jerseys, but there were so many other people that, you know, deserved to wear those jerseys with us um that uh during that tournament or during that season of our lives. Uh and hopefully in the way that we represented them, they felt like they got to wear those jerseys all over again. Um but Davidson was it's a small school. Um <laughs> Not a lot of people knew about it. It had been a dominant program in the conference before we came and uh, knew how to win. Um, and I think that we just got a chance to extend that. And obviously having a special player like Steph uh, helped a lot. Well, it makes things a bit easier, but this is a, a picture that I've got of Lovedale playing. Look at his form. Great shooting uh... form. <laughs> Uh, not 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 the best form in the world. I think if you had Steph on that picture, it probably would look much better than that. Well, for those who don't know Steph Curry, um, but Andrew played alongside one of the best shooters of all, no, sorry, the best shooter of all time. And I, I carefully chose a picture where he is in action with Steph. I'm going to try and tilt it so it doesn't get the reflection of the camera. Oh, it's a bit hard. But that's a young Steph. Talk about your relationship with Steph Curry. Is uh, he, as, he's, is he uh, as genuine as I hope he is? He's just Steph. He's, uh, that's the best way to describe him. Um, he is himself. Mm -hmm. He's always uh, been comfortable in who he is. And he's been very... Um, like coach would say, he balances his confidence with humility. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, he's just an amazing guy. Uh, I, I like the, the way that he leads um, and he leads by the way he acts. Uh, he doesn't mm -hmm. say, say things and then allow you to figure out how to get them done. Um, and, and so I think I, his life inspires me. He's, he's just really an awesome human being. And every time that we've uh, been blessed to spend time with him, it just doesn't feel like, you know, the Steph that the rest of the world knows, right? Yeah. It just feels like Steph to us. And and it takes a very special person uh, to maintain that, um, to maintain that. And we're able to talk about, um, I don't know, we don't talk about basketball that much, really. We talk about That's our nice. family and we talk about our kids and, yeah. We talk about the good that he's doing in the world through, mm. you know, his he and his wife's uh, Eatland Play Foundation, and um, and so he's he is Steph. Uh, that's the best way I get to explain it because he's uh, ever since we've been very fortunate to be teammates and and got into be friends and, and got into to know him. He's just he's himself, uh, and he doesn't do things any other way he doesn't do things because it's just going to make you happy he does things because he feels like it's the right way or the right things to do the right way to do it or the right things to do um and it's it is what you need to succeed at that level and not get carried away uh, yeah. and and i'm just so thankful that he's he possesses what it takes because he is truly uh beyond basketball he's a special person yeah yeah but i admire him as, as as billions do w w on the davidson team you said he was a he's such a good leader and you admire how he leads you know davidson he was this he wasn't steph curry then was he in the terms of how people look at him now i mean obviously yeah. he always was steph curry but was he the leader amongst that team because uh, i know he encountered a few issues early on but was he was he the leader from the get-go or was there somebody else kind of running the show until no, we had, to... uh, so we had other leaders. We had uh, we had uh, Thomas Sander, who we called the general. Mm -hmm. um, we had Jason Richards and we had uh, Boris Mino, who were upper class men. Right. Steph was um, Steph was a sophomore when they were seniors. And yeah. Um, and so those guys were uh, they were leading the team uh, in every way, helping to shape the culture, ensure that. Uh, they kind of passed the baton down to down to us, and I think that, um, and I think the year that I was a senior, uh, Steph was a co-captain uh, with um, with the other guys on on the team as well, um, and, and so there was that 
there was a level of ownership that each person had, each person had uh, on the team. Uh, and I think on Steph's part, uh, he plays so exceptionally and he works so hard that it rubs off on everybody. Um, and I think that that was something that uh, made his leadership exceptional was that he mm. was the best player on the team. Uh, and because he was the best player on the team, didn't mean he got to get away with things. It meant that uh, coach held him accountable, um, mm -hmm. but also he held himself accountable to to standards that, you know, it's kind of like the Steph is doing it. Who am I to say no? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that in the way he carried himself. Right. Um, you know, coach would always say, do you want to be a shining star? Or do you want to be a shooting star? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think Steph always opted to be a shining star, um, you know, and and that meant that, uh, you know, he gave light to everyone. Um, and, and, and it was um, and I think that that is what sometimes lacks. We lack in our world. Right. It's that we're such a we're mostly on this journey where we are thinking about how we're going to shine. Um, but we often forget that sometimes it's better when we, sh we get to share the spotlight. Um, and you see that, you see that in the way he leads at Golden State, he shares the spotlight with so many other players and he truly doesn't care who takes the credit. So, uh, we did have leaders on the team, mm -hmm. um, Thomas, Boris and Jason, who were exceptional at what they did and how they led, which, uh, helped to get us to where they are. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that, uh, the best leadership that you can get is under coach Bob McKillop, right? Of course, yeah. It was the fact that he knew the type of players that he wanted on his team and he recruited guys who uh, got along, who guys who, um, who were team players and guys who wanted to thrive within the confines of the system. So um, I think that that was the ultimate thing that, you know, coach did not recruit guys who jumped out, jumped, jumped out of the roof and, I think his thing was he tried to recruit character. Um, he tried to recruit, recruit character most times over over athleticism. Um, the athleticism helps, but I think he looks for high character guys who can who can thrive within within the system, and then that then translates into leadership that gets built yeah. uh, and then passed down. And I think Steph, more than any uh, Steph, just like many of us, was a beneficiary of uh that level of leadership from coach McKillop. so um you know if you're a point guard the team goes just as fast as you go and and that was coach's team and we all got to we all got to buy in uh and because we bought in the philosophies the the things that he taught us about basketball uh, and about life are still things that we carry today into the way we run our lives our yeah. the way we live our lives our, we we live with our families and and the way we get to work with people. How did, um, did you find coach McKillop or did he, did he find you? He found me. Um, wow. he found me and, uh, yeah, came How? to, came to Manchester. Uh, did he's he? known, yeah, he's, he's known to recruit internationally and, wow. um, and he has such great respect for, for Mr. Joe Forber. Uh, wow. and, uh, I think Mr. Joe Forber told him that there's this guy here that, uh, if polished could, uh, you know, help the program and coach took a chance on me without ever seeing me play basketball. You're um, serious. And, uh, yeah. And I he never came knew to, that. Yeah. He came to, he came to Manchester and I sat with him in the, and I sat with him in the, in the office and he talked to me about the school and, um, and he didn't yeah. see you play at Manchester. No, he did not see me no, play at Manchester. No he tape. Tells that, Didn't even see any tape. Know, I, mean, I mean, you know this. Every time I came back from school at Loretto, I always used to, you know, I had to wipe the floor because the kids were coming in at like 5.30 and I had to, we had to do coaching. So we would mop the floor and, and make sure that, um, and most times when I do that, I actually just, you know, sing and, and stuff. So I didn't know he was watching. Wow. And so he said, uh, he always jokes now that he saw me, uh, you know, cleaning the floor and I did it with such, such great attention to detail. Yeah. Um, oh but God. yeah, one of the best decisions I ever made. I, I mean, full credit to him because he definitely, without, I mean, it's hard to make a decision without seeing anything, but you, you were a pivotal part of that program at Davidson. Oh my God. 
He never seen you. Play. I didn't know that story. Yeah, because I remember one summer that you came home and you know we just it was like we well, just carry on like you never even left. We, you know, mm -hmm. Of course, we ask questions about what college is like, yeah. but it's not the same as questions we would ask today about mm -hmm. you know college. It was just are you playing college? How's it? How's it going? How's training? Yeah. What what's it's what's doing great. videotapes I'm like? To get back to do a, doing our thing. Yeah. 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 You're exactly. Right <laughs> um, there was just quickly because I know you have to have to go in a second, but I know uh, there's a beautiful picture of you and Steph hugging at a game. Was that at a basketball game you went to watch him play at? Uh, if you remember which one I, I'm, I'm referring to, I should have printed it actually. But there's a it, the, I don't know what it is. It's just the connection. Sometimes I show I show my son and my partner yeah. that picture, and it just shows the love between your relationship with him. Um, do you remember which picture I'm referring to? I am trying to think. We've taken a couple of pictures. Uh, um, was it a recent one? It was a few years ago, but you're, you're hugging over some rails at a basketball stadium, and it's just a Oh, I think that that's probably against uh, when they... Oh, that was uh, when he... Um, he was definitely back at Davidson for uh, a celebration. Does, yeah. um, does, he ever, does he ever come to your place, make him dinner? Uh, no, but we do. I mean, when 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 he played uh, uh, against Cleveland, when LeBron, the whole big thing between Warriors and LeBron, we were very fortunate to have lived in Cleveland then. So mm. uh, oftentimes when he comes, we would we would have time to hang out. Did you go to um, a basketball final? Did you go to the NBA finals and watch him? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.